Hi, I'm Matt Wateska and I work at Six to Start. We make Zombies Run, the world's best-selling fitness audio adventure game, which is a long way of saying that we make a game in which you go out running in the real world with your headphones in, and we use audio to immerse you in a zombie apocalypse adventure story in which you are the main character. Since we first released Zombies Run in 2012, it's been downloaded over 2.1 million times. We've been featured on the BBC, in Wired Magazine, and the New York Times, and on Conan O'Brien. We've also released over 200 missions for the game across four seasons, which means that you can run with Zombies Run for longer than it would take you to watch the whole of Game of Thrones back to back. And the story's just as exciting as Game of Thrones, but you're gonna get fit while you're playing Zombies Run. Zombies attacked a nearby farmhouse. The survivors are on the roof. We can't just leave them there to die. And now uh, we've got some even more exciting news, which is that we're working on a Zombies Run board game. We've actually been working on it for about nine months, and in that time we've gone through hundreds of custom dice and blank playing cards and labels and so on. And that's taken us through dozens of different iterations of the game itself, each one with different mechanics and inspirations and ideas. Um, and now we're in a place where we're really happy with what we have and we're really excited about where it's going to go. So uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to start a video diary which gives you a look at how we're making the game and where it's come from and all the other games that we've been inspired by and the mechanics that we've tried out and why we thought they might work and why they didn't work and yeah kind of give everyone a sneak peek at what we're going to do. Okay so uh, I just want to get started quickly just in this first video by explaining how we got the very first very basic prototype onto the table. Uh, what it was that we were basing it on, the decisions we made there, and why it didn't work. What's really instructive is actually uh, the ways in which it doesn't work and, you know, what the experience of that game not working feels like. Um, and eventually, you know, you want to start testing things that do work and finding out what works well. The first step is, you know, to sort of make those mistakes and learn from them quickly and figure out exactly why what you know isn't going to work isn't going to work because that gives you really good avenues to explore and sort of problems to solve and we thought about a game that we've been playing quite a lot of recently that we really enjoyed um that a game came out a couple of years ago a really interesting game called escape the curse of the temple and this game is a real-time cooperative uh, dice rolling game where everyone around the table has a set of these five dice that have unique symbols on them and you're all rolling them trying to get certain combinations of symbols to allow you to move through the temple and escape. And the trick of the game, or the core kind of mechanic is, as soon as you've rolled the dice, you can re-roll the dice to try and get the symbols that you need. So this means that not only are you rolling these dice very quickly and trying to spot the right patterns very quickly, you're also communicating with the other players at the table uh, quite uh, quickly and efficiently. So we really liked the way this game felt when we were playing it and we thought, you know, this is kind of how in the fiction of Zombies Run, the runners in the field would be interacting. You know, they'd be, you know, paying a lot of attention to what was around them. They'd be acting rapidly and skillfully, but also they'd be communicating very clearly and very efficiently. So we thought, you know, this isn't a bad place to start. Um, it's a fast game, it's a fun game, it has an audio soundtrack like Zombies Run. You know, let's just give it a go. So we uh, took some of the symbols that we use in the app. We took the runner symbol and we took the zombies chasing the runner symbol. And we took the supply gathering symbol. So we had the zombies and we had the running and we had the supply gathering. And we put those on a set of dice that we made, just printed up some labels, made some custom dice, which takes ages by the way, because it's really fiddly, very annoying. Um, we, made a, we made all these custom dice and we made up just some rudimentary sort of game tiles that the players would move through and we thought hey you know uh, maybe uh, you're rolling runner symbols to move through the world so maybe some locations are easier to run through than others you know paved roads versus fields so maybe the paved roads you only need to roll one or two runners to move through those spaces but the muddy fields you need to roll three or four runners to move through so that gives the game a bit of interest that terrain is different and then we thought, okay, also maybe when you roll the zombie symbols, maybe that, if you roll too many of them, has a negative consequence. There's too many zombies around. So we thought, 
hey, how about some locations have, they're more dangerous. So the fewer in those places, the, you roll fewer zombie symbols for a bad thing. So maybe in a, you know, a morgue full of reanimated corpses, if you're running past that morgue, you only need to roll one or two zombie symbols and that's going to have a negative effect. But maybe in the empty, big empty field, you roll, you need to roll four or five zombie symbols to have a negative effect because there's not a lot of zombies around there. And then wherever you are, if you roll a supply symbol, you take a supply point. So we thought, okay, this is, you know, basic, very simple, but it kind of quite thematic and uh, expresses what we want it to express. So, you know, we'll give it a try. And as you can probably imagine from the description of the rules, it was really, really boring. It was terrible. It didn't work. We hated it. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of what we intended. You know, we, we intended the game not to work or we didn't think it would work perfectly first time out. And the important thing isn't that it worked or not worked, it's understanding why and <clears throat> exploring the failure and, and really understanding the failure properly, it's really learning from those mistakes. Uh, so that's what we, we tried to do. We looked at what didn't work and what worked in Escape and didn't work in our version and, and why. And we realised a couple of things. We realised, firstly, that uh, the game itself, there was no interesting decisions to make at all. And, you know, there's the famous maxim that uh, a game is just a series of interesting decisions. And we didn't even have one interesting decision to make, so we didn't have a game at all. We had a negative game, opposite of a game. Um, so that was the first big problem. And very obvious problem to anyone who just listened to that explanation of the rules. And the second problem we had was we were thinking, you know, on the surface what we had was quite thematic. And theme is very important when you're adapting an existing property into a board game, obviously. So on the surface, what we had was very, very thematic. We had a lot of the iconography from Zombies Run. We'd taken a lot of the names from Zombies Run and used them for places. And, um, you know, the core mechanic was very fast and that felt right for a running game. And, you know, we had the running and we had the zombies and we had the supplies. And we thought, OK, this is, you know, this is what Zombies Run is. It's very, very thematic. But actually we realised that it wasn't really thematic at all because it didn't capture the sort of moment to moment essence of Zombies Run. You know, that essence is, you know, we were thinking about what are the runners doing in Zombies Run. And what they're doing is they're interacting with the world around them, they're interrogating the world around them, they're looking at, you know, where they are and what's around them and how they can use that to escape from the zombies or accomplish their mission and the zombies you know uh in zombies run every encounter with a new zombie or with a horde is thrilling and it's a moment of uh terror and excitement and ingenuity as you try and work out how you're going to escape and those moments are the are the real big uh dramatic beats in a zombies run mission but in our game uh it's just you know, you roll too many symbols and now you lose a point of life. It was a very basic, boring, kind of rudimentary mechanic that had none of the thrill or the flavour or the decision making of the Zombies Run game that we're adapting. So these were the things that we realised we really needed to explore and interrogate and work on. And uh, making this first basic, terrible, awful prototype was really instructive in sort of pointing us in the right direction and, and giving us something to get our teeth into to work out why what we were making wasn't working. So what we had, we knew we had to make the world more interesting. The locations had to have something about them that weren't just numbers on a spreadsheet. They weren't just variables. And we knew that we needed to have more interesting decisions for the runners to make, for the players to make together. Um, right now there were no decisions to make, you just rolled the dice and moved. And we knew that we had to make the threat of the zombies both more exciting and more interesting and more thematic, more flavorful and have more about it, basically, not just a simple penalty. And those are the things that I'm going to talk about in the next video.